In the 19th and 20th centuries, the successive occupations of Egypt by the French and British, the deciphering of Egyptian hieroglyphs, and the advancement of archaeological science led to the opening of burial chambers in the Valley of the Kings, where the mummified bodies of pharaohs who ruled ancient Egypt for thousands of years were interred. The idea that mummies were cursed gained traction in the media after the financier of the famous discovery of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb died a few months later, and newspapers highlighted this on their front pages, spreading the belief worldwide. If you are curious about what the mummy curse, also known as the curse of Tutankhamun, entails, feel free to delve into our content. Everything began in 1922 with the discovery of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb. The leading British aristocrat George Herbert, the financier of the excavation, died a few months after the tomb's discovery, falling ill. Subsequently, on March 21, 1923, an American newspaper ran the headline, Pharaoh's 3,000-year curse afflicts Carnarvon, following his illness. Carnarvon's sickness and death made headlines on front pages worldwide, with many newspapers carrying similar titles. The belief that disturbing the pharaoh in his tomb led to curses emerged. In reality, Carnarvon's death was caused by a mosquito bite. While shaving, he accidentally cut the area where a mosquito had bitten him, leading to an infection and, ultimately, his death from blood poisoning. His wife, Almina Herbert de Carnarvon, who accompanied him during the excavation, fell ill around the same time, but recovered, living a long life and passing away at the age of 93 in 1969. Archaeologist Howard Carter discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in November 1922. However, Carter waited for the excavation's financier Carnarvon to arrive from England before entering the burial chamber. Once Carnarvon arrived, they examined the items buried with Tutankhamun. There is no record of any writing mentioning a curse in the burial chamber, either before or after Carnarvon's death. While the concept of a curse may sound amusing, it has been seriously examined by scientists and became the subject of articles. The concept of a curse, though sounding amusing, has been seriously examined by scientists and discussed in articles. In several articles written in 1996 and 1998, the possibility of a supposedly cursed pathogen causing long-term effects was debated. Scientists turned to mathematical, modeling to calculate how long a pathogen could survive in the tomb. Sylvain Gordon, one of the authors of the articles, suggests the mysterious death of Lord Carnarvon shortly after entering Tutankhamun's tomb, might well have been caused by an extremely deadly long-lived pathogen. A recent study has debunked this possibility. In a study conducted in 2013, brown spots on Tutankhamun's coffin were analyzed, revealing that the organism causing these spots was not active. Furthermore, in a 2002 study conducted by Mark Nelson, a professor of epidemiology and preventive medicine, it was observed that individuals entering the burial chamber did not die at a young age. Nelson examined the records of 25 people who worked on the excavation or entered the chamber shortly after the discovery, stating that these individuals lived an average of 70 years in the environment and argued that there was no evidence proving the mummy was cursed. The origin of the mummy curse predates Tutankhamun. Jasmine Day, a cultural anthropologist with a doctorate and an author of a book on mummies and the mummy curse, states, The curse is nothing more than a growing legend, fueled by fictional literature, horror films, media stories, and in today's age, the influence of the internet, starting from the mid-19th century. Through her research, she found stories from the 1860s where adventurers robbed female mummies, stole their jewelry, and then met a gruesome end. Day adds, In stories written by women, the plundering of mummies symbolized rape. In reality, during the heyday of Western colonialism, Egypt's heritage was destroyed, looted, and spread around the world. 
Hence, one can argue that these two situations are connected. Other researchers also agree that the curse concept predates Tutankhamun. Ronald Fritzer, a history professor at the University of Athens and author of a book on the fantastical aspects of Egyptian culture, states, the idea of Egypt being a land of mysteries extends back to the Greeks and Romans. Over time, these two civilizations associated the people of Egypt with all sorts of supernatural things and magic. After Napoleon's campaign, Egypt began to open up to the Western world. The subject of the mummy curse found its place in the film industry as well. Eleanor Dobson, a lecturer at the University of Birmingham, says, in the early 1920s, cinema audiences were dying to see the discoveries in Egypt on the silver screen with a gothic narrative. The curse was so prominent that when the Titanic sank, people believed that a nun's mummy displayed at the British Museum had caused the ship to sink, leading to numerous letters being written to the museum. The museum director felt the need to clarify that it was just a rumor to alleviate the panic in the public. Nevertheless, people still requested flowers to be placed around the mummy to appease the spirit of the deceased nun, even going as far as making donations to the museum for this purpose. The greatest contribution to the spread of the idea that Tutankhamun's tomb is cursed belongs to the Times of London newspaper, which first introduced this concept. The interest sparked by the news published by the newspaper prompted other publications to release similar stories, leading to every newspaper having headlines related to the curse. Jasmine Day notes, one of the journalists who benefited the most from this situation was Arthur Weigel, a former Egyptologist and rival of Howard Carter, the archaeologist who discovered the tomb. When Carnarvon died, Weigel claimed that the curse of Tutankhamun had killed him, even though he had previously stated that he didn't personally believe in the curse. Despite Carter blaming Weigel for promoting the idea of the tomb's curse, people continued to believe in the curse. Regarding the readers of that era, Jasmine Day says, millions of readers raised on decades of fabricated curse stories willingly believed in the curse. It was a few years after the end of World War I, and these people wanted to believe that it was possible to communicate with their deceased family members. The belief in the curse was further fueled by the endorsement of many famous authors, such as Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes. Carter himself became a part of the curse chaos. In 1923, when his pet canary died, Carter wrote a semi-fictional short story titled The Grave of the Bird, The Death of the White Canary, with the help of magazine writer Percy White, describing his pet's death. Day comments on this, stating, Carter endured both the pleasure and pain of the rumors about the curse. When newspapers began sharing more lies than truths about the so-called curse, he became quite disturbed and regretted turning a blind eye to the rumors at the time. People still associate archeological discoveries and current events with curses. In 2018, when a massive coffin dating back 2,000 years was found in Alexandria, the local residents feared opening the coffin would bring a curse upon them and made efforts to prevent its opening. Similarly, when the cargo ship Ever Given blocked the Suez Canal earlier this year, some argued that the pharaoh mummies, set to be moved to a museum in Fustat, caused the blockage to prevent the ship from reaching its destination, attempting to persuade authorities to reconsider their decision. While the clip is silent, the newsreel would have originally been shown with narration by Ben Grauer. The following is the monologue taken from the collection's production files. The following clip, taken from Universal Newsreel Volume 22, released 2 from 43, features the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities in a story released on April 28, 1949. The story highlights the King Tut, exhibit at the museum in Cairo, showing Tutankhamun's sarcophagus. 
The story also discusses continued digging at the site of Queen Hatshepsut's tomb, the Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut in Luxor. In the Museum of Cairo, the treasures of 30 centuries unroll the scroll of history in one of the world's most ancient cultures. Egypt, the inscrutable, slowly gives up her secrets, and the most fabulous of these is the sarcophagus of King Tut. With its gold-masked mummy in as perfect state of preservation as it was when buried 3,300 years ago. It is only after 10 years of war interruption that digging is resumed at the tomb of Queen Hatshepsut at Luxor. The temple built by one of history's great women in 1493 BC is being restored to its original grandeur. It is a painstaking effort that must be entirely by hand. All mechanical devices are banned for fear of damaging the ancient stone. Another find is the mummy of a priest, a member of the royal family buried 3,000 years ago. The work, which will take years to complete, is under the supervision of Dr. Zakaria, Director of Antiquities for the Egyptian government, a work that is unfolding new pages in history. The artifacts from King Tut's tomb were exhibited outside of Egypt starting in the 1960s. A popular traveling exhibit titled Treasures of Tutankhamun made its way to the United States in 1976. The exhibit traveled to Washington DC, Chicago, New Orleans, Los Angeles, Seattle, New York City and San Francisco and attracted more than 8 million people. The exhibit arrived in the United States aboard the USS Sylvania. Footage of the exhibit's arrival and unloading people still associate archaeological discoveries and current events with curses. An inconclusive situation, it is impossible to definitively prove or disprove the existence of the Pharaoh's curses. Therefore, there will always be an element of uncertainty about whether or not these curses are real. Some people will continue to believe based on anecdotes and personal experiences that suggest the existence of curses. Others will argue that these curses are nothing more than superstition and have no scientific basis. It seems that the Pharaoh's curses will forever remain a mystery.